Essentially, Mrs. Uh, the role of a barrister is to... Represent you in court with professionalism and sensitivity. I think you just moved my... It's my job. Is to advise you uh, without telling you, obviously. I mean, uh, it's your decision. I'm here to help, uh, if you want me to. Uh, but above all, uh, a barrister is here to discuss the question of fees. Morning, sir. Did you see that smug, self-righteous pontificator on the box last night, Vince? It's a disgrace. Yes, sir, I quite agree. Keegan picks a team. Hanson should keep his big Scottish gob out of it. <laughs> what are you talking about, Hanson? They had Mark Morsefield QC on Newsnight. It really is unseemly for the bar when barristers start slavering to get on television purely to enhance their own reputations. They weren't discussing the Brendan Doyle appeal, were they, sir? I approach that case with complete impartiality, Vince. I do the same with every guilty thug I prosecute. <laughs> the man wrote a nine-page confession, for heaven's sake. That's just the way things go, sir. Who'd have guessed they'd be able to prove he was illiterate? <laughs> Briefing for you this morning, sir. You see, Vince? Some of us get on with the real business of barristering, representing people in need. What is it? Crown against speed, sir. Theft of gold ingots from some big jewellers. God. Am I right in thinking you represented him before, sir? Bernie, never mind the evidence speed. <laughs> He's stuck in court for weeks on lousy legal aid fees. Can't you get rid of it? If I spent the time doing privately paid work, your 10% looks a lot healthier. Forgive me, sir. You have, of course, got a long-standing prior fixture booked into the diary that I shall arrange this instant. Good. <laughs> Give the speed brief to Hillary. It'll help to fill one of the black holes in his practice. <laughs> Morning, Hillary. Morning. It's really nice to be here with you today. <clears throat> you cycling? Yeah, I uh, had a bit of a run-in with a moped. So that's an interesting and very valid point you make. What? I think it's important that road traffic law should be more generally respected by users of light motorised two-wheeled vehicles. In an ideal world. Oh, it's this morning, isn't it? Your legal eagle spot on TV. Oh, you look great. Are they, uh, are they paying you big wonga? Actually, no, it's not quite as much as you might think at first, but, uh, well, that's the last reason why I'm doing it. I just think that it's really important that barristers are seen to be doing what we do do which is helping people with legal disputes that affect their lives. I think it's really brave of you. I was once offered a TV slot, but, uh, well, you worry about giving up your privacy, everybody knowing who you are, what your peers are going to think. You didn't do it? No, I pulled out. They were really good about it, though. Uh, in the end, John Noakes agreed to send me the badge in the post. <laughs> In a funny way, this TV thing kind of reminds me of why I joined the profession in the first place. You know, to help people who don't have the resources to help themselves. I'd be petrified of the cameras. I get nervous before I go into court. Well, no, not, not nervous. No, that's not right. It's more, uh, scared. <laughs> I've been right, miss. I've got the solicitor of that Sunset Care Homes case of yours on the phone. Yeah, not now, Vince. You remember, you advised them on their tenancy. The landlord's trying to evict all the over 80s, especially the infirm ones, just wants to throw them out on the street. They need you to do an emergency injunction this morning to stop it. This morning? Are you sure that's one of my cases? Yeah, we had a morning change. Remember Mr. Dawlin? He runs at home. That's right. You found out they weren't getting enough to eat. And that one who thought you were her daughter climbed on the conference table and started singing all those Vera Lynn songs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I really don't recall it. I mean, you get so many cases, they just blur into each other. They're desperate for you to go to court now. Vince, look, I am on daytime TV this morning with Matthew and Trudy. So, um, you want me to tell them you can't do it then? Oh, no, no, I do want to help them, obviously. Um... I'll say you do it then. No, hold on. No, I do want to help, and I will. It's just that actually, uh, I genuinely think that I might be of more assistance if I don't do the case. In what sense? Well, in the sense that if the opportunity arises, I can raise the sort of issues that are affecting them on a broader platform. There is that, and there's the money, of course. That's a side issue. Look, they're in need. I'll do the case. Uh, sorry, sir, they said to say definitely no if you offered. <laughs> I can do an injunction. Uh, they said to say, if you said you could do an injunction, thanks, but they don't mind the cold all that much and forget <laughs> it completely. Yes, Vince is right. Uh, they are your clients. Ethically, you must represent them. No, I, I don't think that you're looking at the broader picture, Hillary. Uh, very well, miss. I'll tell them you've got a prior urgent case book in the diary, and that's why, with regret, you can't represent them this morning. Yes, you see, I think that is the broader picture. <laughs> Vince? 
bins. I've got these papers. And I... What are you doing? I'm just trying to get to my channel. We have a rule restricting television in chambers. Ally McBeal and the Bill. Yes. <laughs> Ruth's making her TV debut. What do you mean? She's a new legal eagle on daytime TV. Ruth is appearing on television. I don't remember her asking my permission. If it's handled properly, it'll do her profile a lot of good. Well, and Chambers. Well, those are side issues for Ruth. She really just wants to show barristers are relevant. She actually said that. Oh, don't you see, Hillary? It's all, it's all quick fix instant solutions. People ring in with what are very real, very complex legal problems and they get answers within 30 seconds. It's appalling. How can you charge people proper money for that? <laughs> it's starting. Now what are you doing? Just a little loosener for her. I've got to make them on the switchboard. You can't ring in. That's a fix. He's just to settle her nerves. Hello, Claude, mate. It's Vince. <laughs> Top boy, yeah. Hello. <laughs> so, let's have a look at what's coming up on today's Have a Very Nice Morning. In just a moment, we'll be taking your calls to have a legal eagle, Barrister Ruth Quirk. <sighs> let's take a look at the rundown. Ten past eleven, we've got the one the girls have been waiting for. Yep, ten past is a time for Have's exclusive and in-depth interview with Boyzone's Ronan Keating. He's gorgeous, isn't he? Even the mums like me think he's a smasher. That's life, love and longing inside the very private and sensationally frank world of Ronan Keating. Exclusive and in-depth at ten past eleven. And at twelve minutes past, it's Harriet. <laughs> What other carrier bag is your bag? Is paper preferred or is plastic fantastic? Former gladiator Wolf joins us to give his views on the ideal shopping receptacle. Some real fireworks there, I can promise you. And at quarter past, it's Gobstoppers. Have a sneaky chef. The Reverend Baltimore Chamberlain makes a brave and welcome return to talk about food after plastic surgery. The smell has been driving me mad all morning. All I know is jelly's involved somewhere. Well, it's a very great pleasure for us all on Have a Very Nice Morning to welcome Barrister Ruth Quirk to answer your legal questions. Hello, Ruth. Welcome to Have a Ruth, or should I call you Your Honour? <laughs> That's a judge's matter. I'm just a simple barrister. Ruth's fine. Well, let's have our first caller. Lance! Lance from London. You're through to our legal eagle. Hello, Lance. Hello, Lance. Hello, Lance. Hello, Miss. Oh, please call me Ruth. Oh, sorry, Miss. I was just wondering, I think barristers perform a crucial role within the community at a reasonable cost and with great efficiency. Just wanted to know if you agree. Yes, actually, I do. Um, Lance, you see, the public often perceive us as aloof and overpaid, but most of the time we're just trying to help the poor and the disadvantaged. Thank you. That's really helped me. <laughs> Interesting point to what Lance was saying, isn't it? I mean, it really does seem, well, to a lay person, that with the law there are some things which are legal and quite a lot which could be called illegal. It's a bit of a minefield, particularly for women. Anyway, let's have our second caller. Uh, Thomas. Thomas from Enfield. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Uh, hello? Hello, Thomas. Uh, I'm a care worker. Oh, uh, can I just stop you there for a moment? Uh, I just want to say that I think you do an incredibly important job for very little financial reward and, um, well, I just wanted to say that. Oh, thanks. Um, I, I work in an old people's home, mm -hmm. the Sunset Care Home in Enfield. <laughs> so our landlord is evicting us. Uh, the bailiffs have arrived this morning and they're taking some of the older residents out of the building. Apparently the boss, Mr Dorling, said that we were supposed to have this really caring barrister, but she's busy. <laughs> you know, I, I think there's something wrong with my earpiece. I don't seem to be getting a lot of this. I don't know yeah. if the audience can hear this. Yeah. <laughs> that seems OK. Uh, what's happening there now, Thomas? Oh. No, they're taking old Gerald. Oh, uh, look, the boss is in the other room. I can put him on if you like. No, don't get Mr. Dorling. <laughs> there are more pressing matters. What you need is an immediate injunction. Oh, I'll never remember this. Let me get Mr. Dorling. He's trying to get hold of our barrister. No, no, no. Uh, you see, there is no time for that. Um, and please don't bring Mr. Dorling to the television or the phone. Um, go to a citizen's advice centre and show them the witness statements on pages four to eight in the blue box file of documents. Blue box file? If there is a blue box file of documents, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and um, tell them that you need an emergency injunction, but they must go to the court today immediately. Uh, Thomas, our eagle has spoken. But there does seem to be a bit of a kerfuffle in the background. Is everyone okay, though, Thomas? Yes, one of the old ladies is singing the White Cliffs of Dover to keep oh, the spirits up. Oh, wait, here's Mr. Dorling. No, no, please, go to a citizen's advice centre now. That is the only way to solve this, but you must go now. Please, go. Okay, thanks, and um, bye. <laughs> You really 
don't have to worry about sending me the jam, really. I'm trying to lose weight. Ruth, that was sensational. Do you think it went okay? Difficult to tell when you're in the thick of it. I've just been down to our telephone room. The switchboard was on fire. We haven't had as many calls since Trudy started hormone replacement therapy. It was real-life drama unfolding before the viewer's eyes. Now, that is television to talk about. Oh, well, it was exciting, wasn't it? Not just exciting, very exciting. You see, that's what I want this show to be all about. Real issues affecting real people. I was literally just saying the same thing to our celebrity astrologer. I would uh, really like to build on this spot of yours. Well, if it helps, yeah. I mean, just... Getting to grips with the issues that shape people's lives as a barrister, that's what I'm here to do. Can yeah. we talk about this in more detail? Great! You see, I think we should take on the big issues. Things like race discrimination. Oh, brilliant. Huge topic. Oh, don't worry. I can get our work experience research in the scene to do all the boring donkey work. Nice little Indian lad, he won't mind. <laughs> Yes, this is all rather difficult. Um, my name is John Fuller Carp. I thought I might be the sort of person your programme is looking for. Right. Could you tell me what you've done? Certainly. On the criminal side, uh, a couple of big frauds, false accounting, uh, shoplifting, <laughs> of course. And uh, there have been several offences of violence, robberies, the odd GBH. <laughs> right. OK, that's quite a lot. Shall I come in? Um, yes, OK. I have to admit, uh, things have been a bit quiet on the sexual side recently. <laughs> uh, although I do have an indecent exposure coming up. Right, look, we're, we're definitely interested. Obviously, I'll need to make a couple of calls. Oh, well, that's marvellous. What a relief. <laughs> Must be a great relief, having spoken about it. Well, yes, it is, as, as a matter of fact. I, I think there'd be popular interest in my contribution, don't you? Yes, I think if we could get you on, a lot of people's minds would be put at rest. <laughs> Tell me, uh, would you be able to send a car for me? Well, it'll be more of a van than a car. A van? And a motorbike. <laughs> I think that's an appropriate form of transport for a distinguished barrister. Oh, not another barrister. Uh, yes, as I said, I'm an authority on a broad range of legal matters. Well, you'd have heard of the offence of wasting producers' time, then. <laughs> yeah. D-A-L-R-P-L-E. Hello, Vince. Hello, Kev. Breeze from Miss Quirk? Yeah, put them over there, mate. Thanks. With you in a moment, sir. Uh, no, she's not back from the studio yet. I I'll put it with the other messages, madam. OK, thanks. Yeah. We seem busy, Vince. Anything in for me? Uh, actually, there was, sir, yes. Oh, good. Circular from your book club. <laughs> the new Barbara Taylor Bradford's in. Hi. Oh, hi. I'm so sorry I'm late. It turns out the taxi driver normally does nights and he's a big daytime TV fan. <laughs> Seemed to go pretty well, miss. Quite a few messages for you. Yes, it was exciting. Well, it just felt like a worthwhile thing to do. You know, it's not something that's meant to lead to more work. <sighs> Three property advices, a shipping dispute and two care home cases. Ah! How nice! Um, Ruth, can I just... Uh, Ruth... Oh. Can I just say, um... I'm absolutely delighted it went so well, but I do have a few concerns about this TV work. Yeah, it's not going to interfere with my work. Here. Oh, no, no, and it's not that at all. No, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled that you're so enthused by it. It's lovely to see. It's just that, um, oh, no, it is silly. Ruth, you enjoy your moment. My goodness, you've deserved it. Well, it's not silly if you've got a concern. Well... I remember when you first came down from, where was it, Lincolnshire? Lancashire. That's right, the north. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there, was a, there was a commitment, an idealism about you. I, I may have appeared that I didn't appreciate it at the time, although I still maintain you misunderstood my references to elocution lessons. But, but <laughs> you were so full of what was right. Yes, but I've never stopped being like that. Yes, yes, and I remember, I remember meeting you when you'd come back from doing a case for free. I was just off to pay in some of my cheques, you know, and I, I often thought genuinely then, who indeed was the richer person? But, John, your two things have changed, and really, I have you. No, no, and, and that's all I have some qualms about, Ruth, you see. Television, the media, they're so full of people who want to manipulate you, and what really worries me, Ruth, is at the end of the process, you will feel conned. 
you see. And one wonders really whether they don't need someone, I don't know, a little older, a little more worldly. <laughs> sure, I just can't believe that you're doing this. What? Well, you're really quite remarkable. Oh, well, no, thank you, Ruth, but it's you who are remarkable. Well, no, John, remarkable in the sense that I can't believe what a devious dickhead you are. <laughs> that is grossly unfair. Can't you ever just wish people well with what they're trying to achieve? Yes. Good luck in your bloody television show. <laughs> Hard little cow. <laughs> and so I put it to you that you are a dishonest, racist, sexist thug on the make. <laughs> You're supposed to respond, Vince. I'm impugning your character. Oh, sorry, sir. I thought you were just checking who I was. <laughs> Am I interrupting something? No, 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 not at all. No, no, no. What are you doing in your robes, Hillary? Ah, uh, well, actually, I'm just, uh, just practicing my advocacy. I'm a bit nervous about the cameras. What are you talking about? What cameras? The ones in court. Don't be stupid, Hillary. They don't have cameras in court. Yes, I know. Uh, it's, it's part of a, a pilot scheme set up by the Lord Chancellor to televise trials. It's all totally random, but apparently one of mine has been chosen. One of your trials is going to be televised? <laughs> yes, the, uh, the crown against speed. Speed? <laughs> it's a pretty major theft. Could go on for days. Speed? Uh, well, great, great, Hillary, you carry on. Uh, would you mind if I just borrowed Vincent for a moment? Perhaps you could question your desk. It's solid mahogany, so it shouldn't break under cross-examination. <laughs> a second series of Matthew, that's great. <laughs> what the hell's going on, Vince? Am I the only person in these chambers without my own television series? It was the Lord Chancellor's selection. I had no control over it, It's sir. my case. They selected it after you told me to return it to Mr. Tripping. Well, get it back. Don't you realise what this could mean for me? Look what happened to the lawyers in the O.J. Simpson trial. They weren't even English. <laughs> I can't do it, sir. Once a brief's return, that's it. And Mr. Tripping's been practising really hard. I think, I think it's just what his confidence needs. Sod Mr. Tripping's confidence! <laughs> sit Hillary on top of a Tomahawk missile, you'd still be about as terrifying in cross-examination as the Andrex puppy. <laughs> I'm 50 times the advocate he is, and I have popular appeal, as I hope you'll agree. Well, you're certainly more experienced, sir. <laughs> when I open my mouth, Vince, there's a magic, a power. It's like having sex. Except, of course, it's all oral. <laughs> that explains why I always fancy a cigarette after I've had a chat with you, sir. <laughs> with all that power, I'll suggest you talk to Mr Trippin yourself, sir. <laughs> Are you free for a word? Ah, uh, well, could you wait? Uh, I've got this case. Oh, yes, this televised trial of yours. Vincent was just chatting about it. Great stuff. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. Oh, I don't see why. You'll be magnificent. Forecourt Buildings is very proud of you. Thanks. Actually, I, I already worked out my lines of cross-examination. If I say so myself, they're, uh, they're pretty good. I'm not surprised. What are you going to ask? Well, uh, the store detective at Fitzallen said he saw Speed enter the shop at 3.30 on the 27th of March, and we've got an alibi until 4. So I just get him to confirm the time, you know, lots of times, so the jury really get it in their heads, and he's sunk as a witness. Oh, that's brilliant. Brilliant. The time, yes. Oh, well, he was as good as one. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they put the clocks forward the night before, but I don't think that's a very important point. <laughs> Oh. Oh, bum. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you think they'll pick up on that? Oh, no, absolutely. No, I don't think they will. No, no, no. Almost definitely not. No, unless, of course, you're very, very unlucky and you get some smart-ass prosecutor who thinks to check things. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I, I, I've got them another way. You see, I worked out the geography of the shop. Mm. The store detective said he saw Speed enter the shop when he was standing behind the display cabinet. But I got our solicitor to stand behind the display cabinet and measure it, and you can't see anything. Oh, that's clever, Hillary. That's very, very clever to do it geographically. I'd never have thought of that. Yeah, yeah you see, uh, all I do is lead him through it, make him feel comfortable whilst cutting off all his escape routes, uh, get him to confirm the dimensions of the display cabinet, where he was, the defendant... Yes, the security cameras. What? <laughs> the security cameras. Do, you, uh, do they uh, do they have any uh, do they do they 
He doesn't mention any of those in the statement. No, they never do. The judge always seems to allow it in in evidence, though. I actually find that terribly annoying. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, both of my lines of cross-examination are hopeless. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that at all. Not at all. I mean, indeed, if, if how you've just described it to me is indeed the way you intend to present your case in front of all those cameras and all the viewers, I think you'd very well prove to be quite memorable. <laughs> this was your case uh, originally, John. Uh, you know, I never, uh, I never really wanted it. Uh, well, was it one of mine? I don't think so. Yes, it was definitely. Oh. Well, I'm sure I wouldn't have approached it anything like as thoroughly as you, Hilary. <laughs> oh yes, uh, uh, yes, you would. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, I, 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 I want to do it, obviously, but I do feel a bit, 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 bit bad because. Uh, well, it was yours, uh, and uh, it should be, I mean, you doing it, really, and uh, not me. But, Hilary, I don't even know if I'm free. I could go and check with Vince. <laughs> God, I'm good. <laughs> Caught TV, I deserve my own network. <laughs> um, who is the, uh, who is the chap in reception with uh, all the flowers? Oh, it's that bloke from that TV programme of a very good, nice and happy early morning or something. <laughs> Matthew Hoadley. He's here to see Miss Quirk. She's in con. She won't be finished for quite a while. I told him, but he wanted to wait. Did he? Hmm. Mr Hoadley, John Fuller Carp, Head of Chambers. I'm so sorry you've been kept waiting. I'm very, very tedious for you. Nothing to do but watch clients going to and fro. <laughs> Not at all, Mr Fuller Carp. Life makes people, but people make life. Indeed. Um, actually, it's rather fortunate you dropped in because um, I've got a rather lengthy television appearance coming up in court, some scheme of the Lord Chancellor's. It's a mass audience, and so, uh, well, you know, any pointers from an old hand? Silla Black once said two words to me. <laughs> Could I ask what they were? <laughs> People really count. Sorry, isn't Calm it? Calm down from the mountain. The mountain? The intellectual mountain. You know, I find it almost impossible to come to terms with the idea that there may be people out there with less than half my intelligence. Yes. <laughs> Seems incredible, doesn't it? <laughs> Hit them in the heart. Think about it. I'm a person. You're a person. They're people. Now, what have you got in common? Being people? Experience. <laughs> Share yours with them. Bond. Eight million people helped me through my vasectomy. If you really want to help them to love you, then love them right back. Yes. Invaluable. <laughs> Mr. Fullercott. Your Honour. The camera will find you. You don't need to find it. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, the eyes of the nation are upon this courtroom. Now, I know I can rely upon you to show not only that justice is done, but that it is done to the highest professional standard. Your Honour, I am sorry to rise so early. I do so merely to endorse Your Honour's weighty and laudable words in which I have profound faith. Thank and... you, Mr. Fuller Cup. <laughs> Proceed to please. Mr. Speed, you may rest assured that I shall allow no prosecution witness to remain unsavaged. I shall permit no opportunity to address the jury to go begging in securing your acquittal from this monstrously trumped-up charge of deliberate and willful... Yeah, I did just want to say one thing. Yes, and you shall have your opportunity to do so, Mr Speed, from the witness box for days, skillfully examined in chief by none other than myself. <laughs> Bernard Speed, you are charged that on the 27th day of March 2000, you stole 50 gold ingots from Fitzalan's jewellers, Hatton Garden. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. <laughs> what? Objection! Cut! Are you objecting to your client's guilty plea? Uh, 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 Your Honour, in the stress engendered by the cameras, um, my client is obviously confused. Might I suggest a short adjournment or perhaps a commercial break? Um, <laughs> whilst I, I take instructions. The cameras will continue, however, you may take instructions quickly. I, I, I'm obliged, Your Honour. What are you doing? You pleaded guilty now. Apologise immediately and I can argue for a change of plea. But I want to plead guilty. Why? You can't. I mean, a guilty plea will be over in minutes. We've got five days of television scheduling to fill. Have we given this thorough consideration? 
But I am guilty. No, no, no. You feel guilty. That's a different thing. You feel guilty. It's not a surprise. We all feel guilty from time to time. I mean, I mean, I, I gave two buttons and a washer to the blind collection this year. I feel guilty. It's only natural. But it's not the same as committing a, a criminal offence. But I did it. <laughs> it's me. I want to come clean for once. I can't go on living a lie. Why not? You're a criminal, aren't you? You're supposed to live a lie. For God's sake, man, you've got a list of convictions as long as my arm. I mean, it's not going to be a big change for you. I'm going to do the right thing. Oh, brilliant. What happened? You met St Paul on the road to Wormwood Scrubs. <laughs> Mr Fuller Cup, you are rapidly becoming the least popular barrister in this courtroom. Now, do you wish to advance any mitigation? Uh, yes. Yes, I do, Your Honour. Yes. Um, um, I am a person. <laughs> you are a person. The defendant is a person. What do we have in common? Are you quite all right? Two <laughs> words. Two words, Your Honour. And they are? Silla Black, Your Honour. <laughs> are you OK, sir? How'd it go? Bloody criminals. They tell you they're going to plead not guilty and then they admit it was them. It's so dishonest. <laughs> what about the camera technique? How do you think you come across? Cretin Matthew Holy share experience with them. Well, surprise, surprise, Her Honour wasn't all that interested in my client's eczema. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, all right, I give in. You are the undisputed media star of Chambers. Have a good gloat. I'm sure we all look forward to you winning legal rear of the year. <laughs> Oh, very, very touching. But shouldn't you be saving all that for your BAFTA acceptance speech? Most promising litigator on a sofa. Best barrister in a supporting bra. <laughs> Sir? Can you just shut up for once? You're right, miss. What have I said? If you really want to know, I am no longer the legal eagle. Miss, what happened? Matthew Hoadley happened. We went out to discuss my contribution to the show. He wanted to talk about what went into your slot. <laughs> Sir! What? He touched me. He said it was learning microphone technique and... Oh, I'm such an idiot! You're being very hard on yourself, miss. Do you want me to get some people? My cousin Terry oh, could... Oh, no, I'm uh... fine. It'd be clean. They wouldn't touch his hands or face. No. Dealt with him. Did you whack him? Let's just say I made sure that that particular microphone is no longer of broadcast quality. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry this, this happened to you. Thank you, John. This is all my fault. I stupidly tried to muscle in on your slot and that made you more determined to get involved with these television people. Yes, well, it was me who was taken in by him. No, I, I should have just warned you and left it at that. Instead of which, this man wholly manhandles you and very nearly succeeds in poisoning the relationship in what is still, I hope, a pretty decent set of chambers. So he's not going to get away with it. Oh, no, no, it's all right. I, I don't want you to do anything. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ruth. I, this is a matter of principle. I feel absolutely livid about this. The man needs a lesson in how to treat people. Well, I suppose it would be good for him to know that other people knew. Oh, he'll know, I know. You leave it to me. Uh, Vince, break open my box of Mr. Kipling Mini Battenbergs for Ruth. <laughs> is that Matthew Hoadley? This is John Fuller Carp. I just wanted to say, I'm terribly sorry you had this difficulty with my colleague Ruth Quirk. <laughs> Being from Leicestershire, she can be a bit blunt. <laughs> Yes, indeed, people make life, life makes people. Um, tell me, do you have anybody in mind for her replacement? <laughs> There's more from Chambers at the same time, 10 o'clock next Thursday night, here on BBC One.